Hello students. In part 1 and part 2 of circles, we looked into certain terminologies like what is a segment of a circle, what do you mean by sector of a circle, and certain theorems based on chord of a circle. In this online session, that is the third part of circle, we will see few more theorems and look into some problems from exercise 10.5. AOB is an angle which is subtended by this arc AXB. Angle AOB, you are aware, is the central angle. Whatever is the measure of the central angle, the same is the measure of the corresponding minor arc. So in this case, the central angle is 120 degree. So the corresponding minor arc AXB is also 120 degree. AXB plus arc APB gives you the angular measure of the circle, gives you the complete circle and you are aware that the angular measure of a circle is 360 degree. So if this arc AXB is 120 degree, the major arc APB will be 360 degree minus this 120 degree that is 240 degree. Now similarly here, AB is the chord of the circle which is also the diameter of the circle. It is segregating this circle into two parts. Each such region is called as the segment of the circle. So here you have two semicircular regions. The central angle here AOB is 180 degree. So the corresponding arc will also be 180 degree. Same is the case with arc APB. This arc APB will also be 180 degree because it is 360 degree minus this 180 degree. And the other reason for APB being 180 is both of them are semicircular. Now in the third diagram, we have the minor arc APB and the major arc AXB. 240 degree is the central angle. This angle AOB will be 360 degree minus 240 degree, that is 120 degree. So if the central angle AOB, the one in green out here, if this angle is 120 degree, the corresponding minor arc APB will be 120 degree. So what do you see in all these three figures? We have learned that the central angle corresponds to the measure of the minor arc. And the major arc will be 360 degree minus the measure of the minor arc. Similarly in this, minor arc APB you can calculate the measure of this arc by subtracting 240 from 360 degree. So 360 minus 240 will give you the measure of the minor arc APB. The measure of the corresponding minor arc is equal to the measure of the central angle and in order to find the major arc, subtract the measure of the minor arc from 360 degree. Now we look into another slide which talks about a theorem which is very important and there are problems based on that theorem. Angle AOB is an angle which is at the center and it is subtended by arc AB. That same arc AB is also subtending another angle on the circle that is APB. So is there a relation between this angle APB and this central angle AOB? Yes. What is the theorem? The angle subtended by the arc at the center is double. The angle subtended by the same arc at anywhere on the circle. That means this angle AOB is double the angle APB. Likewise, in the second figure, you have AOB, this angle as the central angle. And this angle is subtended by which arc? It is subtended by this arc, AB. Now, there is another angle subtended by the same arc AB, that is angle APB. So, the angle, so angle APB will be half of the central angle or in other words, the central angle will be double this angle APB. The same is the case here. Angle APB is half of this angle 240 degree. So 
what does this theorem imply it says that the measure of the central angle is always double the measure of the angle subtended by the same arc so you have to look at the starting point a ending point b and see if there is an angle subtended by this arc ab at the center and if there is one more angle subtended by the same arc at anywhere else on the circle and if there is one angle then the relation is that angle apb will be half of angle aob or this angle aob will be double of this angle now there are some important terminologies like the inscribed angle intercepted arc and the central angle arc axc is a minor arc this arc axc is subtending an angle abc this angle abc is lying on the circle arc axc is called the intercepted arc and angle abc is called as the inscribed angle it is inscribed this angle abc is inscribed in this part of the circle and it is intercepted it is formed by which arc it is formed by arc axc so take the starting letter a and the ending letter c and an angle is formed on the circle so this angle abc is called as a inscribed angle and it is intercepted by arc axc so these two Uh, words are very important inscribed angle and intercepted arc and you will notice that the inscribed angle is always half the measure of the intercepted arc so if the intercepted arc is 120 degree what will be the measure of the inscribed angle abc it will be 60 degree if measure arc axc is 90 degree measure angle abc will be 45 degree because the inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc it is based on the theorem that we just did before in the previous slide look at this diagram axc is an arc it is a minor arc it is forming an angle at the center which is the central angle and whatever is the measure of angle aoc the same is the measure of arc axc so if measure arc axc is 60 degree the central angle the corresponding central angle will be 60 degree okay because you have learned that the measure of the minor arc is equal to the measure of the central angle or the central angle corresponds to the measure of the minor arc now if this is 60 angle aoc is also 60 degree and we have just done the theorem now the measure of the angle at the center is always double the measure of the angle subtended by the same arc at any point on the circle so if angle aoc is 60 degree If angle AOC is 60 degree, what is the measure of angle ABC? It will be half, so it will be 30 degree. If angle AOC is 120 degree, then what will be the measure of angle ABC? It will be 60 degree. In other words, the inscribed angle ABC is half the measure of arc AXC. That is the inscribed angle. is half the measure of the intercepted arc or you can also put it like this the measure of the angle at the center is double the measure of the angle subtended by the same arc at any point on the circle meaning is the same now we will look into how to prove this theorem this is theorem 10.8 the statement of the theorem we have already seen we have to prove that measure angle aob is 
twice measure of angle ABB. Now, in order to prove this is twice of ABB, you take triangle AOP. In this triangle AOP, you are aware that OP is equal to OA because they are the radii of the same circle. So because of this, these two angles, I have named it as X because they become congruent because they are the base angles of the isosceles triangle. Similarly, in this triangle POP, OP is equal to OB. So these two angles will remain congruent. I have named it as Y because of the same reason, they are the base angles of isosceles triangle. Angle APB now becomes X plus Y because of angle addition property. It's mentioned out here. Now, this angle AOD, isn't it the exterior angle of triangle AOP? So, the exterior angle AOD is equal to X plus X. So, this exterior angle AOD is 2X. Similarly, exterior angle BOD of this triangle POB will be 2Y because the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. So you get this as 2Y. Now 2X plus 2Y is angle AOB. I take two common outside, so I get X plus Y. So measure angle AOB is twice X plus Y. But what is this X plus Y? X plus Y is APB. So in place of X plus Y, we put APB. So we have proved that the angle subtended by an arc at the center is double the angle subtended by the same arc at any point on the circle. So AOB is twice the measure of angle APB. This is the proof of the theorem. Now we will look into another theorem that is 10.9. I just want you to remember the statement for it. What does the theorem state? Angles in the same segment of a circle are equal. Now you are aware that MN is a chord of the circle. There are other chords also but this chord MN divides the circle into two segments. This in white is the major segment and this is the minor segment. Now look at the angles in the major segment. Look at angle A and look at angle B. These angles which are in the major segment, they will be congruent to each other because angles in the same segment of a circle are equal. So how do you find out which are the angles in the, in the, in the segment? You have to look at the chord. Starting letter M, ending letter N, they are forming an angle. And both these angles are inscribed in this circle and these two angles will be equal because they are the angles in the major segment. Similarly, if I have another angle here in this yellow region, I suppose I have two angles out here lying on the circle, those two angles will be equal because they are angles in the minor segment. So this is an important theorem. We'll be using this uh, to solve some problems from 10.5. Angles in the same segment of a circle are equal. Now, based on these two theorems, we will uh, solve some problems from exercise 10.5. Only those questions which, uh, in which we need to use these theorems. Okay. Now, this is the first question of exercise uh, 10.5 which is based on theorem 10.8 and 10.9. Here they have asked you to find out the measure of angle ADC. Now let's quickly revise. ADC is inscribed in this arc ADC. It is subtended by arc ABC. ABC is also called the intercepted arc and ADC is the inscribed angle. We have learned all this. You've also learned that angle AOC is the central angle. The measure of the angle at the center is double the measure of the angle subtended by the same arc at any point on the circle. So won't AOC be double of ADC? 
and you will know that it will be double because see this angle is bigger than this it narrows at the tip out here so 60 plus 30 is 90 so measure angle aoc is 90 and if measure angle aoc is 90 what will be measure angle adc it will be half so adc is 45 degree so we are using this property angle subtended by an arc at the circle is half the measure of the angle subtended at the center or vice versa the angle subtended at the center is double the angle subtended by the same arc at any other point on the circle we look into another uh, problem which is based on the theorem 10.9 this is question number four in this question number four it is mentioned that you have to find the value of this angle a and this angle d angle a b c is 69 degree and angle a c b is 31 degree now look at triangle b a c in this triangle b a c this is 31 angle b is 69 so we can find out the value of angle a the measure of angle a measure angle a will be 80 degree whatever is the measure of angle a will be the measure of angle d why which theorem have you used bc is the chord so this entire region becomes the major segment and angles in this segment are equal or angles in the same segment are equal so if a is 80 degree d will also be 80 degree because they are formed by this chord bc or they are angles lying in the same segment so measure angle bdc is 80 degree question number five in figure a b c d are the four points on the circle you have to find the value of angle b a c that is this angle now look at the triangle EDC. Isn't this angle BEC the exterior angle of this triangle? So the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. So measure angle BEC will be angle D plus angle DCE. So you get the value of BDC as 110 degree. So this angle is 110. Now, angle BDC is 110. So, what will be the measure of angle A here? A will also be 110 because BC is the chord. The chord of the circle divides the circle into two segments. This is one of the segments and the angle in the same segments are equal. So, starting letter B, ending letter C, we are forming an angle on this segment. So, BAC will be equal to BDC which is equal to 110. So we have looked into three problems from 10.5, which is based on theorem 10.8 and theorem 10.9. I want you all to go through the theorems that we have done and solve these problems, which I have just shown you how it has to be done. And in the next online class, we will deal with few more problems and a new theorem. Thank you.